Shoot and burn, baby. I'm out here in Texas recording for the new Exposed video workshop, and we're gonna be talking about exposure. How to take more photos of everything so that you happen to get one really, really good one. It works. No, it doesn't. The zone system was originally developed by Ansel Adams and Fred Archer, and what it gives us is a huge amount of control over tone value and over our light and over our visualization helping us through that and knowing exactly what's going on in the scene. And the thing to remember with the zone system is, you know, while it's a whole system, yeah, it was developed uh, with this, this whole system for film developing and, and, and making prints and all this kind of stuff, the core of the zone system is the zone scale. And it's a scale from zero to 10 in, in one stop increments, okay? So what you have is zero, pure black, clipped black, and then all the way to 10, which is pure clipped white, okay? And everything in between is these different shades of gray. Now it's represented as shades of gray, but it doesn't matter whether you're shooting color, or black and white, or film, or digital, it doesn't matter. It's a system of tonal management. And it's terribly powerful. Now what I have here today is a Pentex digital spot meter. And spot metering is really phenomenal for, you know, using the zone system, it's pretty much essential. And what you can do, and there, your, your, your camera probably has a spot meter in it. Um, a handheld spot meter is very powerful, but you can, you can dig into the concepts of, of the zone system right now using the in-camera meter. The essence of the zone system and the zone scales and the core of it in terms of exposure is this. Let's say I, I look at a scene and I'm, and I'm in this vast sweeping canyon right here and I think about my tone values and what I want to do with this scene. Okay, so I'm starting to build a visualization. I'm starting to work with the tone and the light. And let's say I'm gonna use a reference point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose a main subject or I'm gonna choose a, base, a baseline for how, where I wanna place my tones. So let's, let's choose just the stone face down here. That's a simple one to start with. So I'm gonna meter on the stone face and it's gonna give me a 13 and a third. Okay, now that's exposure value. And exposure value is something you've seen in your camera. You can go plus one, two, minus one, two. Well, that's a whole system. That's a whole system that an older meter like this gives you direct readings in. And there's still meters you can get that will give you exposure value readings. And they're, they're incredibly handy. To me, they're much better than a meter that just tells you, you know, hey, use this exposure. Because I can quickly point a uh, meter like this around and it'll say, hey, the stone face is a 13 and a third, the sky is a 13 and a third. I mean, I know those tone values are roughly the same. I can quickly determine dynamic range and things like that. But let's stay on ta task of the zones. We'll talk about meters later. Okay, so I got a 13 and a third on this stone face. And what that tells me is, is how much light is being reflected back at me. Here's the thing. A meter, when you meter a surface, is giving you the reading for zone five. Zone five is middle gray. Now let me repeat it, listen very carefully. All meters are giving you a reading for middle gray. So if you meter something, if you take the spot meter in your camera right now and you meter something, and that meter, you know, it's not gonna give you exposure value, it's gonna say, hey, use 80th of a second at F11, okay? Or whatever, it gives you that reading. What, what it's telling you, is, is not what's the best exposure for the scene. It's telling you what will put that tone value, that light being reflected back at your lens at middle gray. Now this is huge because you don't always want everything at middle gray. So on the one hand, it's like, well, that's kind of annoying because everything's gonna be gray. Well, no, because that's, that's the power of the zone system. That's what the zone system gives us. So knowing that, we can put it wherever we want. And that's the beauty of the zone system. Remember, this is reading an exposure value. Your camera, the stops are exposure value. The zone system is one stop increments, just like exposure value. So I can, I can meter this and say, all right, great, 13 and a third. I'm gonna set it to 13 and a third is the exposure value on this, 13 and a third stops. On this manual meter, I'm gonna manually turn the dials. On an on a, a electronic meter, it would work a little bit differently, but the concept is gonna be the same. What you're gonna do is you have the zone scale, okay? 
with that, you can simply decide where you want to place the tone values. So let's say I look at this tone face and I say, no, this is my highlight area. I don't want this in zone five. I don't want this middle gray. This should be brighter. This shouldn't be pure white, but it should be brighter. It should be, say, zone seven. All right, let's say we wanted to put it in zone seven. All you have to do now is move it up two stops. You've now taken it from middle gray. You've spot metered the surface of the, of the stone. That's middle gray, and you say, I want it two stops lighter. You move it up two stops. In my case, I'm gonna turn the dial to 11 and a third. But on your camera, you would just, you know, you could, you could do the same thing by pushing up two stops. You, you've placed the rocket zone seven now. Now, of course, everything else in the scene is gonna follow. So if you have something that's now pushed into the highlights, you have to take that into account. Or if you're going the other way, you have something that's pushed into shadow, you have to take that into account. And that's, that's stuff we're gonna talk about more. We're gonna analyze images. We're gonna look at different scenarios. But think about this for a moment, because this, this is incredibly, incredibly powerful. You know, let, let's look at another scene. Let's say I'm looking at this, this grass right here, and I wanna use that as a reference point, okay? So this is 12 and 2 thirds on the highlights of this grass. Okay, and I might say, great, I wanna put that at zone, at zone six. It's gonna move up to 11 and 2 thirds. I've just moved up one stop. So what I've done, the meter is a constant. The meter told me, hey, whatever I meter, it's giving me a zone five reading for when I spot meter. Now, we're gonna go into a bit more details on how different meters work and stuff like that. And, and that's, gonna, that's something for another episode. So let's just kind of focus on the spot meter. If you're working in camera, you can set your in-camera settings to spot meter and you can do this right now. You can point it around and, and see what it's doing and, and get spot meter readings for various setups. Okay, so let's point it up here, 13 and a third. Again, same as that rock down there. Now let's say I, I wanna go completely the other way. You know, let's say I, I, I meter on the rock and I say, okay, that's a 13 down on that, that face of the rock. Let's put it down at zone four. Now it's actually darker than middle gray, okay? I'm just gonna move down a stop. By moving down a stop, I've taken the meter reading, which said, hey, here's zone, here's zone five. Move down a stop. That's my reading to place it in zone four. I can go anywhere I want. This is the beauty of the zone system. And once you really wrap your head around this, right now you may be thinking, okay, what's the big deal? You're just changing stops up and down. But this is, this is a constant, reliable system that you can point around and you can see what's gonna happen in the entire scene, okay? If I, if I put the rock up at zone seven, say, like we originally planned, 